So did you think that when you were watching old Andy Fraser and Free back in 69 at the, the Richmond Athletic Ground, that you were on the, the cusp of beginning this five and a half, six decade career in music? Was that the dream? I always knew I'd do it, to be honest. I always knew I always knew I'd be successful. It was the only thing in my although that said, I've always thought I was gonna win the lottery as well. And I haven't. <laughs> but um uh, no, I I I've I always had um a lot of confidence in my own abilities. I don't know why really, you know, whether it was uh misplaced or what, but I just always thought, no, you put it put it like this. If I hadn't done what I've done, I'd be dead by now, I'm sure. I probably would have been a drug dealer or a criminal, so you know. Or a violinist. Because you were a bit of a talent there. I, I, by, the, by that time, I hated the violin. As soon as I, as soon as I heard the Beatles, um, all I wanted to do was be, I wanted to be the fifth Beatle. I used to write to them, you know. And have, I used to fill exercise books full of stuff about writing about them, how much I loved them. Did you ever um, get a reply? Because it was funny. When no, you talk no, I didn't, unfortunately. Because <laughs> you did say, when we're talking about the new album now, that um, you did, that Paul McCartney and Stevie Wonder didn't get back to you on this, so you oh, had to no, get. You know, some, some people, like, manners, didn't come into it. <laughs> so yeah. the new album, then, yes, mate, is coming. Just saying, and again, it, it's just got a great feel and, and a vibe to it. Like you decided, look, you know, I'm going to get a gang of friends together, and we're just going to have. Fun. It's like get the beer out. We're going to have a party. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, 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 I um, yeah. Apart from apart from Paul and Stevie, who I'm not sending Christmas cards to this year, um, everyone else was was uh very keen. You know, I mean, unbelievably so. You know, even the even the ones I didn't pay. You know, if it, they were they were keen as well. So that's uh, it was very gratifying. You got Francis yeah, involved. Um, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Francis from from and Andrew from Status Quo, and various friends from who've played with Ryan's Revenge. Uh, my friend Chris from from Muse. Um, every, yeah, really, everyone I asked said yeah, they'd love to, which was nice. My my cousin Clive, um, and yeah, who's not played with Ryan's Revenge, I think. But my my family, you know, which was great. My daughter, my son Freddie. Then the great thing about them, as I said before, is that they're very cheap. <laughs> yeah, the children. It's it's notorious, isn't it? But getting family involved usually leads to issues. But yours seem to have a great deal of respect uh, for you and what you're doing. I'm talking about for, uh, Max, Freddie, and, and May all involved. I would say that my worst my worst ever musical uh, interlude was with my daughter May uh, on my last. And we were recording a song called "Tomorrow Is Today," and she had to do an octave vocal, and it oh. took two days. And we had the most the, probably the biggest arguments I've ever had with anybody over the course of those two days. So <laughs> yes and no. Um, but, this, but this time around, it was great. I mean, I was working with I was working with a producer that we've all Mike, that we've all got a lot of respect for, a lot of time for, and um, you know, and May also didn't dare. I don't think she dared to have a an argument with me when Mike was involved. But she sat, you know, she sang her heart out. And Freddie, I mean, Freddie and I have all. Uh, I've always got on like a house on fire, musically speaking. You know, he is my favourite guitar player. And um, May, now, now, May, I don't mean she's taken my advice, but she's decided that drumming is the way she wants to go forward, which I always thought it should be for her. In fact, she's got her first her first gig with her new band, Kin, tomorrow in London somewhere, K-I-N. And they're, and they're quite indie, you know, as, as May is. Um, Hind legs and donkey spring to mind when I'm talking, by the way. So, shut me up. <laughs> you know. uh, Chris, Chris um, Wollstenholm. Yeah. From from news, uh, yeah. you two met up originally at the at the O2 uh, at a gig there. You, you hit it off over a love of of football. He's a big Rotherham fan. That's you right. obviously Brentford, and you both hated. The, the whole Premier League super elite thing. I still do. And I was going to say, well, how does that how does that well, compute now with Brentford in it? To say, I used to say that I wasn't going to go if we got in the Premier League, and and I bought a season ticket, and I continue to buy a season ticket, and I go, well, I don't like it. I, I I mean, I'm you know, I debated whether to to renew my season ticket. I mean, you know, it's apparently what everyone wants. And then I read yesterday that the owners trying to get some more investment in. Yeah. 
you know, it's not for me. I don't want to. I don't want to be a fan of a franchise. Brentford wasn't a franchise before. Oh, don't get me wrong, please, but the, the guy Matthew Benham has been amazing for the club. I, I have such total respect for what he's done. But um, I liked a club that was part of the community, you know, that, that, is, that isn't... You yeah, know, absolutely. Like, I well get be, it. Uh, might as well be Burger King. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I do. I do. It was, always a, it was always a product, but it was always a, it was always a product that was um, part of the local community. And it was almost a badge of honour to support Brentford because they were so crap. <laughs> you know what I mean? People say going through thick and thin. I just went through thin for 50 years. <laughs> um, but yeah, and, and Chris, I mean, Chris was a massive Quo fan and I'd actually met him once before then. He actually played, he played guitar at a sound check for us one time. Brilliant. Uh, for, uh, that's, a, that's a long story, but... Um, I know that he told me that afterwards he ran a mile and a half to phone his mum to tell her what he'd just done. <laughs> and he's so this... such a sweet guy. He's re- sweet. That sounds condescending. He's such a great guy. He's really, pro- he's a proper person. Is Chris? You meet a lot of people that aren't proper in this business, and he's not. He's not one of them. Uh, the album is well being put together in uh, what is this double quick time for you, isn't it? I mean, six years to, to write in total, yeah, as yeah, opposed yeah, to was, um, thirteen for the previous. Yeah, no, I know it was. Um, well, I just figured I'd probably de- be dead if I didn't do another one. I probably, di- you know, I wanted to do one. I wanted to do a last one, if you like. And I had a, I had a lot of songs that I was. Um, I just wrote. I wrote a lot of songs and. I just thought that they might as well see the light of day, really. I mean, I know I'm not going to set the world on fire with them, which is a shame. And um, I, I, when you write music, it's a great way of getting stuff off your chest because you can you can couch things in terms that people won't realise what you're talking about or you can be really upfront and say what you're talking about. I mean, that's why I've got it just saying. It's, a, it's mainly just things I think about stuff. You know, and yeah. I, I, probably a lot of people do that, but I'm... Um, I like to, I like to, um, I feel at the moment that I'm being, me and people of my generation are being um, a bit put upon by um, people with with different, who think that the world should be their, should be their way. And uh, I don't like that. I think, you know, in democracy, we should all be able to say what we like and we should, and we should also be able to say what we don't like. And that is really difficult these days. That's why I wrote a song called PC World, by the way. The PC World. Not the, com- not the computer shop. And, um, yeah, <laughs> I, t- I did check. <laughs> Pardon? I did have a listen. Yeah. So I'm getting on to the, uh, the, the tracks on the, on the album. Yeah. Yeah. How difficult was it when you, were, when you were putting this together, having been in, quote, since 86, to put something out which doesn't sound like Quo. Well, you know, Quo is, as, as Vic Poppy used to say, Quo is always the mothership. And, and you know, and it is, and I, I, I'm, I, I couldn't be and ever joined a better band than for, for, for my personal, um, my, the way I wanted my life to go, I couldn't, it's it fulfilled my wildest dreams by by a long way, uh, and not 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 in the success side of things. It's just where it's taken me, the people I've met along the way. Um, yeah, it's been unbelievable. It, you know, there are down there are downsides, but but not many. And um, what um, what's not to like about what I do? But um, do, as as getting back to what you said, um, no, this is me. You know, this is what I write. I, I, I would love it. I would love it if Status Quo recorded all my songs. I'd be happy as Larry. <laughs> you know, but there are, there are, I mean, I thought, I did think one, the one that Francis played on, which is called You're Never Too Old to Rock and Roll. I did think that was um, a nailed on quote, uh, nailed on quote. Absolutely. Song. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, I could really see that that would go well at shows, which it does when I've played it. You know, I mean, it's, 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 you know, it's as, as I said to someone else, it's so cheesy, you need crackers to go with it. But um, <laughs> it's such an obvious thing. And it's, a, and someone said, well, what, you know, what's the meaning behind this song? And I said, there's no meaning. It's a fact. Yeah, yeah. 
well, well when you, you know, put it on he just didn't think it was right even though i mean even you know even though francis has played played his butt, butt off on it the things he did i'm so um pleased with you know he really did put in a shift as 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 I, as i've said as did everybody but yeah it, it just got the blank and the person who's going to sing a song doesn't feel it. There's no point in recording it. You, you know, the vocal carries the song. It, it for me, the vocal stands or falls on the vocal. So, so the first not, track, not my album, the first track, count me out. Oh yeah. When I, I I put it on, I thought, oh, the who can't explain. Well, there is that. Yeah, I wrote that with Francis. I mean, you know, I can. I think I can safely say that there. Um, I nearly put. Sorry, Pete, on, 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 in brackets <laughs> on the title. Um, it's a big difference to, me, to Mr. Townsend. But it, it, it came across from something I wrote from front. I was writing with Francis. He sends me bits when we write songs together, which take me into different places. And what, what he sent me wasn't dissimilar to that, but it was not. I just thought, well, that sounds like The Who to me, you know. And I thought, well, bugger it, you know, let's make it sound like The Who. You know, I mean, what what did... I keep using this phrase, but what's not to like about sounding like the Who? He is one of the best best rhythm guitar players there's ever been, in my opinion. Oh, in my not so humble opinion, by the way. Uh, uh, absolutely. Um, it, taking it, care of Mary. Well, just just to finish that, he was an angry. Yeah. You know, they were angry. They they were angry young men. I always thought the Who. Well, I'm an angry old man on that song as well, lyrically speaking. You know, it's, they, about, it's about my voice still counts. Taking care of Mary, yeah, love it. The the, the quote, the quote song, because you go through and you think, mm, would that? No, definitely not. Definitely not. The, the 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 first one, I thought, oh, quote song, taking care of Mary, and that never too old to rock and roll, uh, but two two really upbeat, two two just great party tracks. Yeah, it, 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 bizarrely, it's a kind of sad lyric on taking care of Mary. It's about it, 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 I wrote it in my caravan. And um, I, I, more of that later, obviously. But um, I, I, would, I used to go, uh, if I could get a day or two away on my own, I'd go and I'd generally come up with a song. And I just wrote that song, and it was about my father-in-law when he was dying. And, and he was in the hospital, and, and he had a bit of dementia. And he kept trying to get out of his bed and go back. So I got worried about May, worried about May, which is what he used to call Ma Mary. And um, as he died... My brother-in-law said to him, "It's all right, Dad. We're taking care of Mum. You can let go now." And it really struck, it really stuck with me that what he'd said because it was such a brilliant thing to say. And um, so that's you know her name was Mary, and and he knew that we were taking care of her. And uh, and he popped his clogs not long after that. So it's quite sad for me. And I played it to the family, and there's been a bit you know that some of them got quite emotional about it, which was nice in a way, you know, because music can. Music is a, can be very emotive and emotional. So I, it, it, banging. I was going to say, it's <laughs> the type of song is that how it's written and how how it's written and how it play how it's played out are two completely different things. Then here, yeah, but it's, it, well, it's it's very it's very um, if the, it, yeah, it's very up, but that should be you know. I mean, it, it's not an unhappy it's not an unhappy song. It, it's like saying, don't worry about it, you know. We're taking, you know, we're taking care of Mary, and she lived on for another three years, and we did, and we took care of her. Uh, Wizzy Lizzy. Now, th this has got a bit of a, a more of a sixties rock and roll vibe to it here. I wrote it. I wrote it the day Little Richard died. There's a, these are the clues. Right. I'm glad I'm getting on the right level then. Oh no, you <laughs> are absolutely, and, it, it, and it's about um. I write kind of um whatever it's it's actually we, we had um a, a PA in the band uh, um called uh, Lizzie Liz Liz Ad's head and she she actually works for Robbie Williams they call her the, in fact there's a line there they call her the production mistress um and uh, her email is Wizzy Lizzie Wizzy Lizzie J A I think and I thought oh that just sounds great and it just it just sort of came up I mean it took. My songs actually do take a lot of work for me. I'm not a natural. I'm not a natural songwriter. I can't write out write a, a lyric on the back of a fag packet. You know, I can't. <laughs> well, no. I mean, there's some songs you can hear that they sound like they were written on the back of a fag packet, and sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. I mean, Liam Gallagher springs to mind. Maybe he think maybe he spends a lot of time on his lyrics, but I don't think so. 
I think he spends about half a minute on each song. You, uh, by the way, you, you did come out with a great uh, quote on you and your propensity to um, sit and write songs and stay the distance. Uh, I'd rather go out and rummage through 99p shops than sit in a room and finish a song. <laughs> I'd rather what? Oh, I'd what rather go out yeah. and rummage through 99p shops than sit in a room and finish a song. Who said that, him or me? You. Oh, did you. I? There you go. <laughs> you know what? I love the quote that Noah Gallagher said about his brother. He is, it's great. He is a man with a fork in a world of soup. <laughs> it made me laugh so much. <laughs> it may be someone else's quote, but it's, it's very, very, uh, pith, very pithy. Um, right. Caravan, enough man. About, enough about Liam Gallagher. You know, uh, you know, I mean, uh, Oh, well, he obviously needs the publicity of being mentioned by me anyway. I had a, I had a piss next to him once, actually. They were, they were, we met him in Oasis. They were really nice guys, really friendly. So. We're fighting, you know. Back to, back to the album, Caravan Man. Yeah. So you, you obviously have a bit of a, a love of caravans. Here. And there was a bit of, um, some of I get this right, there was a bit of a Burt Bacharach feel here. It was a bit of a, you know, that 70s, you know, uh, south yeah, of France. Yeah, I mean, I, it's, it's kind of a bit of canned heat going up the country. Um, a bit of Steely Dan, because I'm quite a fan of theirs, um, it's, um, but, but a bit simpler. But again, I wrote that in my caravan about my caravan. I've got a static caravan in, in Witchering in Sussex. It's the third one I've had. Um, and I just... And I love being there. It's the best money I ever spent in my life, and I'm thrilled that I've been able to uh, articulate it. My, my kids had idyllic childhoods uh, in the summer. Where are you going? Down the beach? Where are you going? I'll go to someone else's van. Well, I'll be back for, be back for lunch, you know, whatever. And um, well, down in Eastman Arcade, but a bit later on. And um, my first caravan cost me £8,000, the best, best money I ever spent. And when it got thrown off because... Um, our feet started going through the floor because it was so rotten. Um, I bought a new one, uh, which is really comfortable. And I, if I, I've still got it, but I've actually bought a house around the corner now as well. So I'm, I'm ultimately sad. But that's, that's me and my daughter doing the backing vocals on that. And she did an amazing job. Yeah, that reminds me of, uh, do you ever remember watching The Inbetweeners? Mm-hmm. When Jay was trying to get everybody down to the caravan club. You won't believe how good it is to go caravanning. It's oh, it where is. it all goes off. <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't in my caravan, but then <laughs> I know it is. But my, yeah, mine's a static, you know. It's not a. Um, but yeah, caravan is great fun, and I don't mind if it. I don't mind if it's raining or whatever, you know. And the great thing about a caravan is everything you need. Where is it? Oh, it's over there. <laughs> you know? I mean, I'm up the top floor of my house now, and it's 41 steps from the top to the bottom. You know, if you include the steps outside, and you know, it's a. That's why I'm moving to a bungalow. I'm going to. I'm moving to. I'm going to move to Witchering in a couple of years' time. To a bungalow, uh, but I love. The, I love the van. I absolutely do. I, I should shed a tear when it goes. Uh, my side of the road uh, is is back to the blues. Yeah, and that's that's got Chris Wollstonehome playing bass on it. He um. He was, you know, we, we've spoken, and I know he really does like quote. I mean, as I like Muse, I mean, when I first met him, I said, oh, can we get, you know, can I get a selfie? He said, well, only if I can do one with you. So that was nice. So, we've, you know, there's a, there's a mutual um, there's a mutual respect there with me and him. But he was always saying, oh, yeah, I love the shuffle, you know. I can, uh, you know, I, I'd be really good at that. I thought, all right, then have a go at this. <laughs> you know, and it's in E, so it's not, you know, it's not rocket science, but it's, um, the, the shuffle is, is, it's not easy. People think, you know, people say it's quote three, so three chords, 12 bar, da, 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 da. There's <laughs> only one way to play a shuffle, and that's the right way. And, and Chris, um, of course I should have known, but, um, yeah, he, um, he was moving house and, uh, he got his studio set up and he, and he said, I'll get it done, I'll get it done. And, uh, all of a sudden he did it and uh, it's brilliant and it, it was it, it's exactly um it's exactly right for the song which i like i loved i I've, I've that's one of the few occasions i wrote the lyric before i wrote the song and uh, i i just i don't normally i just i don't know some something will something will come out a riff or a, a lyric you know after after hours and hours or days even of making my brain bleed as rick parfit used to put it and um, 
But that one, I already had the lyric. And then when I came up with, down, 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 which does sound like every other song, I know, I don't care. Um, I thought, well, that, that lyric would probably fit really well with that song. And it did. I'm very, I'm very, very happy with that. Well, I'm, I'm happy with it all, to be honest, Tim. I really a guess. PC, the P, PC world was a bit, has got a bit of a punk and new wave feel. And is that you getting the message of that song across? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I want it to sound quite dark because I'm, I, I'm getting a bit, a bit of a curmudgeon as I get older. Well, I'm not actually. I've just got my opinion and I don't like being told, I don't like being told to shut up by people. You know, I, I, if I told someone to shut up and they said no, I said, all right, well, don't shut up then. <laughs> you, you, you can't, you know. It's just, yeah. You know, I, I just hate this this mob mentality. I mean, I'm not, I'm not in favour of every, you know, of um, particularly particularly uh, right wing sentiment. But I'm neither am I in favour of left wing sentiment. I just want things to work. I don't, and I don't, I don't think that people telling people to shut up all the time is the way forward. So it's me, me, me telling them to shut up. I just, don't, yeah, the bay. The, there's a line in that song I like. The noise you hear the loudest is the baying of the mob in the PC world, and it's true. You know, squeaky wheels, squeaky wheels make the most noise. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, well, one way to rock and roll back down to that, that bluesy feel, and again, like the lyrics. Yeah, growing old disgracefully. Okay. So I must repeat. Yeah, well, I was gonna, I was gonna call it that, but I don't want to repeat old too much because I am. I <laughs> gonna, you know, I tried, to, I tried to think of myself as being um, maturely immature. Um, yeah, so it's you know, it's good. Yeah, they're, they're, it's good fun. I want, um, I, 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 you know, I, I want this. Uh, this record has um, a lot of different moods to it, if you like. Maybe, maybe too many. Maybe I'm trying to be all things to all men, but. Uh, no, it's, it gives it a lot of variation because, you know, you can then go to a hard drinking woman and then, you know, tried and tested. You know, the longer we go, the better it gets. Yeah. You know, it's well, I mean, what we know, you've, taking it slow. Yep. Yeah, you've either listened to it or you're, or, or you're reading the, or you're reading the lyrics. No, I'd listen to it. No, I listened to it all. And that, the, um, the last, the, the last track on that make a mention of is uh, spooning, uh, because it's uh, there's a bit of jazz going on here. So is this about what you get up to on an afternoon when the kids are out? Yeah, <laughs> it's all right, you know, spooning, you know, nothing flash, or, you know, nothing, nothing highfalutin. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, I've been I've been with my wife since either 1978 or 1979. We're not quite sure of the year. They were the wilderness years, shall we say. Um, but we're, you know, we're still there. Tried and tested is about me and her. Um, and there's, so, a one, there's a one called Happy Ending, which is about her. That's the last one track on the album. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And it's not what people think. <laughs> uh, again, I don't, you know, words, you know, I don't like the way words have been hijacked. Uh, you know, and so, I mean, it's, it's actually about a, song, a story that wants a happy ending. It's not about a Thai brothel. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear um mike's oh, mike dear. paxman <laughs> mike, mike mike paxman um uh produced it and you you said you probably wouldn't have done it had he not said no, uh, yes because he um i i think i i wrote on something like on my line that something like I, I i gave him a lot of songs i gave him a lot of songs in black and white you know and he just it's like he, he's, he's such an artist mike he's an artist i'm a piss artist <laughs> but he um he just basically brought out all the colour in the songs, or, and, and gave them colour and, and shine and and vibe that they did that they didn't have because they were demos. And you you do get some artists who um, oh, I've got to get the vibe of the demo, I've got to get the vibe of the demo. And we did in some respects in that uh, some of the core guitar parts were, were lifted from the demos I did just to keep to keep the vibe going. But then, yeah, you know, he just brings so much colour to it. I mean. Uh, yeah, I, I don't. I can't think of many other people I'd like to work with. You, you know, mentioned uh, also put in the put in the, the shift that he did. You met him at the party when you were both pissed. Yes. It wasn't. He? he was putting the band together at the time for Judy Zook, and gave you the great line. Didn't he? If you remember my number, nine, call nine, me, nine, and you've got a gig. Nine. Yeah, nine, you still remember it? Nine, yeah, I said no. It's nine four zero five one nine six. My mate Ronnie Johnson was for nine four oh five one six nine. Yeah, five one nine six. Yeah, I'm good with phone numbers. Luckily for me. So I, I, it's really weird, you know, Tim. I get when I get drunk, 
Um, I've got this really weird thing. I remember. I mean, I can get, I can be paralytic. But it's, it's, it's probably only twice in my life when I've not remem- not be- remembered what's gone on, which is, which sometimes is grossly embarrassing. <laughs> you know, I, yeah, it's, it's a weird thing. So all of this then is, it's easily the best of the trio of albums. And Thank it's, it's, much. yeah, yeah, by a country mile it is. Oh. Um, and it'll be perfectly suited to live environments. And you just think of, um, you know, small, sweaty clubs and, and places like that, intimate uh, venues. So is there going to be, I mean, I know you've got, you know, a, a, a very busy year, but is there any chance that you'll get out and do a bit yes, of um, yeah, touring? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm, do- I'm going to do a bit. I've, I've, I've decided, for funnily enough, that... Um, I, I completely agree with you about the the small sweaty clubbing, but there are clubs. That I I did eighteen shows last year when the album was supposed to be ready, but for various reasons it wasn't. So we actually ended up just putting out an EP of four of the songs, and one of which you haven't mentioned, by the way, which I'm going to bring bring you back to in a minute because that's probably my favourite one. Um, is that what just saying? No, li- Limbo is my fl- yeah on the, on my album. It's just uh, there's a track called Limbo on there, but we'll talk about that in a minute if that's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, um, uh, we yeah we did eighteen shows, and at the end of it, I thought, yeah, I've really enjoyed some of this, and some of this I haven't enjoyed because I'm not, and I've decided that I'm only going to play venues that I really like, where there's a good vibe, where the people are coming there to listen to music, and so basically all I'm going to do, I'm doing the Half Moon in Putney. In October, at the end of October, I'll oh, give that another shameless plug another time. But, um, and I'm doing, I'm doing three shows in a place called Barnaldswick, which is near Burnley, uh, where uh, it's, it's 60 people. It's downstairs. It's just downstairs in a small place. When you play, if you play a quiet song, you can hear a pin drop. If you say something funny, they might laugh. They might not. They're very normal. You know. <laughs> <laughs> um, they can be quite doer, but they're they're not and they're not judgmental. But it's just great. You go there and everyone is listening to what you're doing. And if you've got something to say, you want people to listen. I went to see um, a band called the Sleaford Mods the other week. Oh yeah, yeah. And at Alexander Palace, I'm a big fan. I, I really do like them. And I couldn't believe it. The amount of people they're just talking away. They're on their phone. I just thought, why are you here? You know, it, it's if I go to a gig, I want to, and I and I part with my hard earned cash. I want to, I want to either if I'm going to see status quo, I want to have a really good time and I want to sing along and I want to have a real, real good laugh. These people are just filming it or talking on their phones. So if I'm going to do my little thing and I'm going to put myself out, the people that I want to play to are the people that are listening. Which is why I'm doing the Half Moon, great venue in London. And I'm doing those up there, 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 and that'll be it for this year. Maybe I'm going to make some plans for next year. But at rhinosrevenge.com, you can find everything you need to know about that, except for this week's lottery numbers. <laughs> um, you can find every, yeah, everything you need to know about me. You can buy anything you want of mine as well. You know, the album's out on vinyl and CD, and we've not put a lot of it on Spotify yet because. Apart from anything else, the the royalty is derisory. I think it's such an insult to artists. Uh, it will come out on there at some time, but before then, I want you know, if you like what you hear, then you know, go and buy. Do what people used to do back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> so what's wrong with that? You know, I mean, I, I think if you if you invest your money in something as well, you, you're more likely to dig and delve into it. Absolutely. You know, I mean, I buy, now- I buy a lot of vinyl now. I, well, so do a lot of other people. The vinyl sales are at their, their biggest for, what, 30-odd years? Yeah. I know. Well, I mean, I, 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 tend to buy, I tend to buy a CD, and then I'll buy the vinyl. I, I, mean, the new, I bought the new Peter Gabriel album. I'm very keen on that. And I will buy the vinyl on that. Yeah, he, he's an artist I'm not hugely a fan of, but I am, you know, if this album, I think, I think it's a work of art, his album. Like, for instance... I don't know, Origin of Symmetry, not Origin of Symmetry, Absolution, say, by Muse. You know, there are very few albums I can I consider to be works of art, but that's what, you know, there are a few every few years where where from start to finish, it's really flying along and every, everyone a winner, as they used to say. 
<laughs> now, I've got to end uh, by uh, just uh, just talking a bit about the day job, you know, the mothership. Oh, please do, yeah. Um, so let, let's put something to bed here. Before we do that, I'd just like to mention the, the song Limbo. Oh, Limbo, yes. Yes, that's... Um, Track two. Yes, that's that, there's an example of things, but the things that stick in my mind. Um, I, the line I don't, it starts off with a line I okay, I, I'm just talk about this bit a minute because I like the lip, yeah, go on. I did. And also, my Freddie is playing the guitar on it, and it's awesome, it's unbelievable. The guitar playing, whatever you think, and that's on Spotify. Even if you don't like anything else, check out the guitar playing, it's incredible. But I don't know why, it's just it's in my head, you know. I, I said, I don't, I know where I don't stand with you, you know, as opposed to I, I know where I stand with you. Um, but then when I was in Dexter's Midnight Runners years ago, I went out for dinner with the manager and he was telling me about this girl he was really keen on, but she was a lot younger than him. I met a beautiful girl, but he said, it's like, he said, it's like she, she takes my brains out, puts them in a frying pan, fries them up a bit and gives them back, you know, and, and he probably said that to me in 1988. And it just stuck with me, you know, so I came up, I know where I don't stand with you. It's as if you steal my brain, fry it up a little, put it back again. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's just little, little, you know, it's about being, about, it's not about anything in particular apart from being in limbo. And um, I'm, I'm quite kind of like a sponge if, if I like a lyric. So anyway, I really like the lyric on that song. There's a lovely lyric video for that on YouTube. I've got some video, video, I've got some video, lyric videos on YouTube as well. I've got You're Never Too Old to Rock and Roll. Another song which you didn't mention, which I love, which is called Good Evening Primrose. Which is, yeah, I didn't. Yeah, yeah. That, that's funny enough. That's my really poor Paul McCartney imitation bass line on that. Um, but I'm very, oh, actually, I'm very pleased with the bass line on that. That was two takes. And that's all about a flower called Evening Primrose. So, um, and it's, it, it opens in a minute and it comes out every night. It's just one of the, one of, one of the many billions of miracles of nature. But I, I saw that, um, whilst I was in the garden, um, with a bit of wacky backy. And, um, it just <laughs> it blew my mind. And, um, I just wrote that, I wrote that, and I wrote that song when I had COVID, funny enough. So the COVID the second time around wasn't that bad. But, um, yeah, I'm very, I, I really like that song. I, I like, as I said, I like it all. And thank you very much for the songs you've brought up. Anyway, back to quote. I digress. Yeah, no, the day job. Yes. The mothership. Yeah. So let's put something to bed here. There's a, there's a lot of chatter, right, on on social media, on the you know the the numerous quo fan pages uh, on on Facebook and Instagram, of which there are hundreds of thousands of of, of members, and they're all talking about well. I think, you know, this is the year you got to get to see him because it's going to be the last. It's going to be, you know, the goodbye is coming and, and whatever. But we aren't ready yet, are we, for a quotaless world? There's no quotaless. sign of imminent. Yeah, quotaless world. There's no, there's no, there's no imminent plan of retirement. We're doing this year. Um, a lot of it depends on what Francis wants to do, obviously. And I, I, I don't know. I, I know, I know, and this is really, truthfully, unfortunately, I couldn't get to see his, his, like, his show this time. And I, I'd never really, I wasn't really that bothered about seeing the other two because I didn't think it would tell me anything that I didn't already know. Um, and I'm really peeved that I didn't go to see this one. It just didn't pan out that when Francis was in 50 miles of me that I couldn't get to go once. Um, I know he's really, really enjoyed that. Um, I believe, you know, I mean, I saw him the other week, we did a, we did an advert for Marks and Spencers and I hadn't seen him for nearly two years, although we'd spoken and it was just, it was, you know, when we got back together again, the vibe was just there straight away. You know, it was really good fun again and everyone was very happy to see everybody. So I'm not, a bit, I'm not beating about the bush, but we'll do, I think there'll be a decision made at the end of the year, you know, probably by Francis. I mean, I, we, but Andrew will be nearly 80 by then. Um, so the answer is I'm not giving you any answer. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's, but no, because we don't know either. You know, it might well be that we, we, we finish this, these, this, these shows that, yeah, that's enough. We're done with this, you know, but then that, with that, when, when Freddie started, when my Freddie started playing this for a while, when Rick got sick, that was going to be it. You know, the last night of the electric, last night of the electrics. And a combination of, of Freddie doing it, 
Freddie, I know when Freddie left, we couldn't, I couldn't believe, what do you mean you're leaving? How dare you? You know, I think he's, he's definitely the only person who's ever left this band. Um, <laughs> and then, you know, and then when Richie came along, you know, it, it was, it was all, um, oh, this is good. We're enjoying this. But the thing is, people, people only usually talk about, um, retirement and stopping if they can't do it anymore. It, you know, the, the product that they're putting out isn't any good. And that's not the case in either of those situations. Because, I mean, you know, if you go yeah. to see the band, I, I saw them, I don't know, 18 months ago or, or whatever. Still, still seem top of the game to me. We're still singing songs in the original keys. Pretty much all of them. Like the only one, I, I sing Rain in a, I, well, I, 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 I say, I cheerfully murder Rain. Um, in a, in a lower key to Rick, only be, only because it, I couldn't do it. That I couldn't I couldn't murder it in the right key. I had to murder it in the wrong key. Um, I love singing that song, by the way. So up yours if you think I murder it. Not you. Um, <laughs> you know, we, we're sort of the songs in the original keys, which a lot of bands don't. I mean, I checked out a few um, a few people like you know Guns and Roses. They're all down a semitone or a tone, in fact. Now, um, so many bands that uh, 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 you know uh, what do they call them? Heritage acts are tuning yeah, down yeah. because the singer can't cut it. I mean, Francis is in, is in incredible shape. He, he really not not even for his age. He's just in really good. You know, he really takes care of himself. He, um, I love those uh, little videos. Those little cameo videos he was putting out at yeah. all the stops on his uh, on his talking tour. Yeah. Usually in restaurants eating food. <laughs> oh yeah, you know it's great. It's real. Right, what about then, next thing, an album? So if they, will there be, no. will there be a, 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 another album? I mean, if you no. look back to, to Backbone. No. No, definitely not. I don't think, I don't think so. I, I, I think that it's a question of whether we can be asked or not, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean, there's always, there's always you know, I, I don't know about the, the writing material side of things, but it, it's, it's diminishing returns these days. You know, yeah, yeah. One, one must remember that people would put out an album and then go on tour to promote the album. And now people put out albums to promote a tour. You know, it's um, it's a lot of work. That that put it like this: if we were, for me, I'd rather do another tour than another album. You know, it's 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 so much work, and it's, yeah. It, it, it's not work. I mean, it's you know. I mean, I, I don't get me wrong. I really enjoyed making Backbone. It was a real, it was a real pleasure for me. But Francis had, you know, I I, I sort of chipped in. But Francis had to do a heck of a lot of work on that. And I just, you know, well, we all put in a work. But it's whether, yeah, I'd rather I'd rather do gigs than do another album for me. It's a shame because the the, the album was was great. Um, it was the highest. Charting albums since since you've joined uh, when the uh, in the army now I think got to number seven but this one got to to number six and there were some yeah you know, there were some great tracks on that yeah. album you know some, and you actually did something which was very unusual at that time you actually played the tracks live before the album was released yeah, we've only ever done that once before we did that on heavy traffic we played um. We played two songs, one called All Stand Up and one called Solid Gold. That was very interesting, actually, because we'd recorded them. And then we went out and played them live. And then we re-recorded them for the album, and they were so much better, which is which is obviously the case. But Quo's not, never been that kind of a band, really. You know, some bands go out and make, like comics, if you like, they blood, their, you know, they blood the new material before they, uh, before they, commit, before they commit it. Yeah, yeah. I just go on that retirement thing. One of your great quotes was, um, "Yes, we we have set a date for splitting the band up. Um, it's April the third, twenty thirty four." Well, yeah, you know, I mean, I love what BB King said. They said, "So, BB, when are you going to retire?" He said, "Hmm, but eight years after I'm dead." Dead. <laughs> But it can't. Seriously, though, there will be there, there will be a lot of really emotional people around if they if you turn around and say, "Right, that is that is it. We've decided we're not going to do do it anymore." You know, hey, never say never. You know, when, that's an album. <laughs> no, I know, but it, it, may, it may well be that we um, 
you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm optimistic, you know, that we'll we'll do we'll do more. I don't know when or where, but um, it you know, it, it's not a lot riding on this either. It's just. Do you find it tiring these days? The the travelling and the the hotel. I mean, you've no. got a big European jaunt in um, what yeah. June, July, August. No, I'm I'm I'm, I'm used to it. Uh, you know, I we all have a modus operandi for the day, every day, every show day. And my day involves getting a lot of sleep, doing a lot of walking, um, filling my head with something, and get and, and um, prepare myself for the gig. Having a fantastic time on the gig, which I do every time, or you know nine times out of ten, and then getting on the bus and going off to the next one, doing the same the next day. What's not to like? Are you carry taking cameras and uh, whatever around with you and filming more of this stuff now, going in between gigs, backstage at gigs, preparing for gigs, you know, the whole thing? Because, yeah, I mean, there's an industry in, in this as well. I mean, when you look back to the film that Alan Parker put together, you know, there's been plenty of time in between where you could have been filming all sorts of stuff. No, it's not, it was not the sort of thing we want to do. It's not us, really. I think what I am going to do is on my um on on the next on the next tour we do I'm gonna do quite a lot more stuff on my um I've got a YouTube channel. Yeah. And I think I'm gonna start p- putting up a lot more little little snippets and stuff. So but of me, you know, me and, and whoever wants to be involved, others don't, that's fine. It's you know, because it, I, as I said, I'm gonna put it on my YouTube channel. So it'll be my because I, I used to yeah back in the day I used to, when the internet was more wasn't even as instant as it is now. I used to do a tour log. I used to write write a sort of um, on the on the road diary, which got kind of when, when Facebook and, and everything got really big, it kind of got usurped, and I, I didn't do it. But I'm going to start doing a bit of filming, you know, just with my phone and just put it up. Why not? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, because people devour all of this. Yeah, you might not it's think that. Oh no, it is interesting. I saw. I, and the, the, one of the reasons I'm doing it is that I saw um, a guy called Tony Levin who's playing bass on, he plays bass with Peter Gabriel and King Crimson and a lot of other, but I mean, he's incredible. I mean, he's one of my, one of my idols as a player. Um, but he, he just, you know, every so often he does 30 second clip, minute clip, you know, he did, he did a clip of Peter Gabriel playing one of the songs for the first time. Then he does just bits and bobs that he thinks people might yeah. find interesting. And uh, I, that's, hey, that's very much you- what I, I intend to do. You, you've never fancied doing what uh, Toya and... Um, Robert. Yeah, <laughs> the I'm Sunday got, lunch. I haven't got big tits. <laughs> oh, I thought it was all about the music. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Nobody <laughs> looks at Toya's boobies. No, I mean, you know, oh, that's actually little because Robert's such a, such a... It's really weird, isn't it? He's a charisma-free zone, and yet he's incredible. You know, I mean, I... I I'm a big. I'm not particularly a fan of King Crimson. There's a lot of people I'm not particularly fans of, but I'm a big admirer, and I'm a big admirer of his work. You know, it's not okay. That, uh, Lastly, then, yep. if we're ever down Teddington Way, best place to bump into you for a pint is oh, it still the Masons, the Masons, the Masons Arms? The Masons. No, there's nowhere else. It's the best. <laughs> it's the best pub in the world. 